Okay, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about performance and use and uh, kind of selection of bioplastics from the perspective of, of end use applications rather than we've looked a lot at beginning of life and end of life and now how are we going to use these various bioplastics. I want to caveat what I'm going to say by saying there's quite a, a lot of generalizations here. So it's, we're, we're talking general trends rather than specific formulations, specific blends and so on. Uh, and you'll see what I mean when I, when I get into this. So I wanted to talk about <coughs> really some of the important properties that we're looking at for, for plastic applications, particularly when it comes to sort of packaging applications. So what I've, what I've listed there is maybe eight of the uh, important performance in use characteristics that we want to try and emulate if we're looking at substituting a, a bioplastic for a, for a conventional plastic, or where there's opportunity for, for points of differentiation when it, comes to, when it comes to performance in use. So I, uh, the, the first one right there over on the left is, is clarity, and that's a kind of a, uh, a, um, a composite of um, the glossiness of a, of a polymer material um, versus the haze of that material, how, how clear it, um, it appears from a, from a point of view of being able to see whatever is um, uh, packaged inside that material. Gas barrier properties, phenomenally important from the point of view of extending shelf life in, in, in food packaging. Um, in certain instances, you want free flow of, of gases. In, in other instances, you really want to, um, to prevent um, gases from permeating the, the plastic film and so on. So think carbonated beverages. You don't want a carbonated be beverage to, to lose, its, um, uh, to lose its, its sparkle, its fizz. Um, but if you're packaging something like a, a mushroom or a, or, a, or a material which is which is respiring, there's that balance there between um, protecting shelf life um, and then allowing water vapor, the next one, to, um, to to transmit through a package. So if you think about the way that bread is is manufactured and, and then put in a plastic wrap, there's a period of time when a loaf of bread is is baked that it has to stand before it goes into a plastic into a plastic package, or else you just get a whole lot of condensation on the inside of that and, and on the inside of that plastic. Um, uh, package and so water vapor transmission very important from the point of view of of um, protecting um, uh, the, the material inside and allowing for the aesthetics and so on then there's a the modulus um, how well that material um, resists uh, a, a force or a deformation on there it gets us into rigid versus flexible plastics elongation how far a, a film will will stretch we talked about food wrap earlier on where elongation is really really important um, and you couple that with uh, tensile strength, um, lo a lot of elongation with plus good tensile strengths give you a very durable, uh, a very durable plastic. Processing temperature, also critically important from the point of view of what is the window of opportunity for, for compounding, for thermoforming, for injection molding the material. How, how much of a window of opportunity do you have um, if you are to use existing processing um, uh, equipment and, uh, and parameters for, a, for if you want to substitute a, uh, a bio-based material that's not a drop-in for something else, which is in incumbent in the marketplace. Um, and so let's run through some of those aspects. And again, I'm just going to say in general, here is a sort of um, a, uh, an indication of clarity of bioplastics from, from excellent through, through to poor. Now, there may be folks in the audience who go, who's going to say, well, my bioplastic is, is excellent from a point of view of clarity. This is really just a generalization. And in general terms, PET and polystyrene right up there in terms of, in terms of clarity. So you look, at a, you look at a soda bottle, you look at a, 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 um, a, a beverage container, very, 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 very clear, and that's a, that is a feature of the sort of the claret, the the, the haze, um, uh, and the gloss of the of the material. Cellulose, um, too, um, excellent. And then we kind of run down this order of a uh, very good through moderate through through uh, through poor there as well. So LDP kind of classified as moderate. HDPE, as you as you would re recognize from a, a, a milk carton, um, poor from the point of view of of, of clarity. Um, so cellulose is right up there in terms of clarity. Would, it, would you substitute a cellulose film for PET in a bottle? No, you wouldn't. 
Um, but the, the, the point to understand there is, is, is that you have, this, you have this kind of sliding scale and this is just one aspect of consideration um, when it comes to selecting materials. Here's a slide that, that talks about those barrier properties, oxygen uh, and, and water vapor. So um, we, uh, Adam touched a little bit on, uh, on polyethylene um, furanoate. You'll see that that's um, appearing. I don't know if I have a pointer on, on this thing. Bottom left, um, very low water vapor transmission um, and really good oxygen barrier properties. Um, and what we know about, or what we've heard about PEF, is that it's, uh, it's maybe, yeah, uh, two times better from a point of view of water vapor transmission over PET, four times uh, and ten times better in terms of oxygen barrier properties versus, uh, versus PET. And then there are, there are nuances around PET, whether it's amorphous, whether it's crystalline, and so on. So again, this is general generalization, and this is just specific data that we pull from various, uh, various sources in the literature, and it's just for one formulation of that one, of that one polymer. So there's that, there's that caution, but this just gives you a feel for the trend. Craft paper, um, right up in the, in the top right-hand corner there, so lots of water vapor transmission, great for packaging a bread product um, as soon as it's baked, for example. And then Ecoflex, the BASF, um, uh, e BASF PBAT, we have cellophane there, um, very good water vapor transmission, um, and good oxygen barrier properties there on, on, uh, on cellulose. And then nylon, you see, is, uh, is, is, um, uh, is down there in that sort of PEF, PET range. Uh, from a clarity point of view, maybe not so good as, as, as PET, but and oftentimes used as a, as a layer in a multi-layer film from the point of view of, um, of getting to a, a thin, a thin um, oxygen barrier. Uh, here's some data about um, gas permeation, carbon dioxide versus, uh, versus oxygen. And you'll see down in the bottom left-hand corner, EVLH, ethylene uh, vinyl alcohol, PVDC, polyvinylidene uh, dichloride. The, um, the kind of prototype um, uh, gas barrier materials that, that are used in the sort of the inner layer of a multi-layer film from the point of view of, of providing gas barrier performance to materials in use. PEF is, is kind of in that range there. Nylon 6, which would come from an adipic acid biobased material, um, is right there. Starch has some uh, very good oxygen barrier, uh, reasonable um, carbon dioxide um, barriers too. And that's thermoplastic starch. So, um, And there's a wide range of... Um, uh, there's a wide range of... Um, of values there, depending on how the starch is plasticized, the level of plasticization, and, and so on, and whatever else it might be sort of compounded with. Um, and, and PLA is kind of in the, in the middle of the field there. And then we talked about mechanical properties earlier on as well. Um, combination of elongation at break, uh, modulus. This is a this is a composite of a, of um, uh, data that we've uh, sourced from the literature. Uh, BASF data on EcoVio and EcoFlex, and um, Novamont data on Matabai and um, Origobi. Um, and you'll see there, there's just, just this whole range to, to play with from PLA and PHB up in the, in the top left-hand corner, if you like. Um, high modulus, low elongation at break implies a really brittle polymer, but we've all, we know that PLA can, can give you a flexible film as well if it's compounded with something like PBAT. Uh, PBAT, trade name Ecoflex from from uh, from BASF. So again, just keep in mind that this is for that this is for uh, pure polymer, um, and that there's a, there are really a, there really is a lot of opportunity for, around formulation to change the properties of, of, of these materials. And then Ecovio, which is a PLA PBAT um, blend, different different proportions, right there in the middle of the chart, um, is showing you how. How from going from PLA at the top left, PBAT in the bottom, gives you that sort of operating range um, in, the, in the sort of the, the left half of the, of the quadrant there. And then we see starch um, when, it's, when it's thermoplastic, good elongation at break, um, uh, maybe not so strong as, um, as, uh, as high impact polystyrene, but nevertheless um, some, some useful properties um, right there. 
And here we have a, just a, it's not a comprehensive list, but, a, but give you an idea of, of processing temperatures and, um, and, and tensile strengths and, and flexural strength and so on. So tensile strength, flexural strength, they give you an indication of the, um, the, uh, the durability of the, of the, of the uh, plastic material. So again, kind of generally speaking, bio-based materials tend to have a slightly narrower processing window um, tend to be, and, and they tend to be um, capped at a lower processing temperature as well. So cellulose acetate there, 230 PL, uh, PLAs there, 100 and PLAs there at 243. Um, thermoplastic starch 180. So this is these these um, thermal. Uh, processing temperatures, kind of limited by the sort of hydrolysis that can take place at higher temperature from these from the bio-based materials. So, what about the the various processing techniques? Well, generally speaking, the range of bioplastics that are are available to us can be processed in in principle in the same way as incumbent plastics in the market in the marketplace. What I would say about compounding is that um, Bio-based materials typically need, before they're, before they're compounded or when they're compounded, they need to be handled a little bit more carefully from the point of view of drying the material at the compounding stage. Uh, any, any sort of water that's present um, does sort of have a tendency to depolymerize the, depolymerize the materials. So, so compounding in single, in single strew exclusion, opportunities for degassing, um, removing, uh, removing any residual water should be, should be taken full advantage of um, to prevent any sort of polymer degradation. Um, blow molding, uh, again, used for forming hollow materials, but uh, the, the range of bioplastics typically um, well suited to, to blow molding. I would say cellulose, which is not thermoplast, uh, regenerated cellulose, is probably the exception to these to these rules, but from the point of view of a uh, of a cast film, cellulose is a, is great ma great material. Um, extrusion, if we're going to extrude a multi layer film, then bioplastics tend to give great sealability, um, and they tend to adhere to to other films. Sometimes even without the addition of a tie layer. So when we're thinking about multi layer films, building building performance such as barrier properties, printability, and so on. Um, PLA, when compounded with uh, polyvinyl acetate, or, or then, and then in a layer with, with EcoBio, for example, you get away without the use of an expensive tie layer to hold those laminates uh, together. So sealability is, is, is kind of a, a trend which, which tends to permeate the, the, the bioplastic space. Because of the, the similarity in, in terms of the the um, <clears throat> the chemical properties, the compatibility of the of the of the films that you're you're bringing together. Then, um, from a from an injection molding point of view, again, uh, lots of opportunities for for using existing um, processing equipment. Keeping in mind the compounding and the and the issues around. Um, around degassing, but in, injection molding or in, injection stretch blow molding, particularly suited to um, to, to, to polylactic acid, and then <clears throat> our, the last one, I guess, thermoforming, used a lot in in food packaging. Here we we see um, dimensional stability has been a, has been an issue. How about uh, about retaining that stability? Upon cooling, after a material has has been thermoformed, and then how about the, the the corners and so on? So what I would say in all of these cases is, generally speaking, there are opportunities to substitute in in the various um, in the various applications, but you have to be really kind of specific about the application that you have in mind and talk to talk to your suppliers, talk to your manufacturers about what it is exactly that you need to that you need to achieve. This is a slide that I that I, I, I took from a um, a recent report out of the UK from the Green Alliance, and it's 
It's called Getting It Right from the Start, Developing a Circular Economy for Novel <coughs> Materials. Um, and again, this is just sort of a generalization, but, a, but a giving you an idea of where they, these folks selected four bioplastics, PLA, PEF, um, PHB, and uh, polybutyl uh, succinate. And they compared them against polyethylene terephthalate, HDPE, LDPE, polypropylene, polystyrene, polyvinyl chloride, ABS, and, and polyamide. And said, what are the opportunities here for, for, substituting, for substituting one for another? And where they're, where they're indicated in, in green, they say there's a good, a good opportunity for, for substitution in a general packaging application. Um, where, it's, where it's amber, it's yeah, you could proceed with, with some caution. Um, and where it's red, it's well, these are, these are probably not well suited to, to, to being substituted here. And they, they took into account a whole range of different sort of uh, uh, parameters, not just, end of not just performance in use, but also end of life and so on. So when they, were, when they were looking at PEF and PET, they were thinking about not just the performance advantages that come from PEF over PET in a carbonated beverage application, but also what about recyclability? What about entry into a... Um, into a recycling stream and, and, and so on. Um, and then um, PLA, they see opportunities around polypropylene. We think about polypropylene, rigid are flexible, so they, 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 um, the requirement there to formulate the, the PLA in a way that is appropriate for, for, for changing for, from a, a polypropylene sort of application. Um, and then for, for, for polystyrene, um, thinking about maybe cold beverage, um, and the glossiness that comes from uh, from, uh, from from PLA, and um, the 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 water uh, vapor transmission too. So this is only a starting point, as I say, and, uh, and I kind of caveated the whole of this presentation by by saying that generalizations. And so as a as a uh, as a procurement uh, team, really need to examine the interaction of the of the new material with existing systems in the context of whatever specific application that, that you're looking at. And these, this data, as I said, was derived from a, uh, a series of, of uh, studies of, of packaging applications. And this is just kind of gives you a snapshot. Um, and over time, we want to kind of build this out um, to represent more of the bio, uh, bioplastics that are in the marketplace and compare this against uh, more of the, uh, the current plastics that are also in the in the marketplace. So to conclude, <clears throat> a broad range of material properties is, is available. I mean, we, we talked at the beginning about drop-ins and we talked about novel points of, of differentiation too. And the properties can really be tailored by preparation of, of blends, um, by formulation uh, processes and so on. So recall back, I, I had uh, PLA on that, um, on that modulus elongation slide, un, un, unmodified, a, a strong, brittle polymer, PBAT, very, um, uh, ten, tends to be on the kind of the weaker side, but very, very flexible. And you bring them together, you achieve sort of like an optimization of those, of those blends. Um, and then when it comes to compounding, it comes to injection molding, it comes to injection stretch blow molding or, or thermoforming or, um, or cast film, um, these materials may be processed using uh, conventional techniques. This is important. Food contact materials are, are available. Um, back to that question of specific um, application as well. Really be, be clear on performance in, re, in use characteristics that you require. Is it clarity? Is it oxygen barrier? Is it water barrier? Um, is it a combination of all those things? And that then kind of helps you narrow down what is the specification that you're trying to achieve in terms of, in terms of haze, in terms of glossiness, uh, in terms of barrier properties, in terms of end of life as well. Do you want something which can enter into an existing recycling stream? Do you want the opportunity to, to maybe make compostability claims? What is the end of use um, consideration, end of life consideration there as well? 
So there is, I mean, and there's a lot of information in, in this room and within SPC about sustainability of, uh, of feed stocks and supply chain. That's also a consideration as well, right? Beginning of life, but I wanted to kind of focus on performance in use right here. And that there are end of life management options other than landfill available, which Adam touched on um, in, the, in his presentation that preceded this. So I'm going to wrap up there right on 20 minutes. Questions? Are there any bioplastics that use the material properties of any of the polyamides? I know there's been a chart here. Yeah, so, so if, you, if you think, there are, there are sort of, if you're thinking about specific nylons, nylon, nylon six may, may be getting there, um, but then there is a whole range of polyamides from Archema that are based on uh, that are based on sebacic acid, C10 um, technology, and, and C4, so 410, 510, and so on. So starting to achieve the, the sort of barrier properties that you that you would look for in a, in a nylon film without compromising too much the clarity. Others? All right, well, thank you, folks. <laughs>